Hello, and thank you for joining me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flojo, on another Microsoft Technologies video. We are going to be looking at Copilot Studio today and adaptive cards, and what you can actually do with both of them. Well, with Copilot Studio and adaptive cards, you can actually take the generative answers, generative AI response, and then inject it into an adaptive card and design it and make it look like whatever you want to. You could have it branded, you could have information that says this, this particular response was generated by AI. Anything that you want to do, you can do with the adaptive card and just pass the generative AI response in. But how do you do this then? Well, I'm on Copilot Studio and I've got a Copilot already created. It's for my website, flojo.io, it's a blog and I used it as an example in another video. So if you're interested in learning how I created this Copilot, look on my YouTube channel that you're on right now um, for how to build a Copilot for your website and it will explain all of the steps that you have to take to do that. But what I'm going to be focusing on this video is the adaptive card, so I'm not going to go through all of this Copilot right now. But what we're going to do then is we're going to start with where do you actually go to modify the generative AI response. If you go into the topics and plugins, you're going to see a load of like manual topics that you've got, uh, pre-built ones like thank you, start over and all of that. And you can see here, I've got an error that I need to fix later because I've got an example topic that I've created and I'm currently working on. But if you go into the system section, you're going to see conversation start and that's where it says, hello, I'm Flo Joe Copilot. There you can modify that welcome message, but the conversational boosting section here is where you're going to be able to edit the actual response. So let's take a step back then. Conversational boosting, also known as generative AI, um, also now known on Copilot Studio as generative answers, is when someone puts some information into the type your message section and their intent is unknown. That's what's going to trigger this particular topic. So you see on unknown intent, that means there is no manual topic that's covering it. And let's just say I come into here and I click uh, days between dates in parallel to me. I've got no manual topic that covers that. So if a user has said that, it's then going to say, okay, well, we do not know the intent of the user, trigger this particular um, topic is then going to use the generative answers node. Now you can use this node in manual topics as well, um, but only for on unknown intent is it going to be triggered here. This is going to take the text that the person's put in. So in this example, days between dates in parallel to me, it's going to take that, it's going to use the data source of which the data source is flowjo.io. It's going to go away. It's going to scroll through all the information on that site. Uh, bring all of the information together, generate a response based on the request, and then pass that back to Copilot Studio. And it's going to store it in an answer. But what it's also going to do is it's going to send a message. So if we open up these three dots here on uh, create generative answers and open up advanced, you can see it says send a message. And that's the message that's being sent here. Now the message on the left hand side is just some text. Um, it's obviously been generated by AI and it has a reference link here as well as the reference displayed below. But what we can actually do is we can untick that to not send a message and then we can have it just save in the answer string variable. So topic.answer, the topic that we're on, the answer variable, that is where the information is getting saved. And it's actually getting saved in there although it's posting a message already we can just leave it at that and we can close, and we can save. Now what's going to happen is if I run this same scenario through again, we're going to get no response back. It's going to go through, it's going to get all of the response, it's going to store it in the variable, but we're not actually going to post the message and display it to the user. Now this is where we can use adaptive cards to take that answer string variable that we've got, the text variable that we're storing our generative answers in, and we can put it into an adaptive card and display it to the user. So let's go onto the adaptive card site. I've got two adaptive cards. I've got this one here, 
which is fairly basic. It's just got some text at the top that says this response was generated with AI and it's highlighted in blue just to make it clearer to the user. I've got insert variable here. This is where we're going to be inserting the data from our generative answers. And then I've got, did you uh, find this response helpful? And then a thumbs up and thumbs down. Now, if a user presses one of these, what that's going to do is it's going to actually submit to an action.submit, which will then push the data into the text field area of the actual um, copilot. So it would be as if someone, the user, has said this um, generated answer was useful or on the, in terms of the thumb down, this generated answer was not useful. And then what you can do is you can actually carry a manual topic or a condition underneath that and respond to it, capture CSAT information, however you want to. But this is just an example of that and we're not going to go through that today. But as you can see here, we've got an adaptive card. Now, there is a big glaring issue right here. What is it? Now, the big glaring issue is that it's 1.6. This needs to be 1.5. If you leave it at 1.6, it will not work because Copilot Studio only supports 1.5 and below. So 1.0 will be fine, but you need to make sure 1.5 and below. You cannot go above 1.5. So make sure your target version is that. If you're looking to actually learn how to create um, something like this, I definitely recommend the sample section here. Um, and this is the whole designer where you can just create it. So what I did was I just came into here with a blank new card and I dragged a container. You can see all the structure here. Um, if you're familiar with Power Apps, it's kind of like layering in there. So I've got a container and then I've got a, a column set. So I've got one column and then within that column, I've got a text block and that's where I'm entering the information. You can see the text here and you can actually create IDs to label them. Um, in here, I've got another text block and another container just below it. And this one is just insert variable here. And below, I've got two columns again. Um, I've got a column, I've actually got three columns, but I've got a column set here. And then I've got column one, which is the text block, column two, which is the thumbs up, and column three, which is the thumbs down, and they are just images. Now, if you want to put images into an adaptive card, you can actually use base 64 uh, images or SVG images or anything like that. Um, you can insert that, but I definitely recommend using base 64 for things like thumbs up, thumbs down, um, or something that you're not going to have on a dedicated URL. If you're using a company uh, logo and you're going to have that on a URL that's not going to change, then you can use that in your adaptive card as well, which we'll look at later. But Essentially, we've created a uh, fairly tame adaptive card here, but it looks a bit better than the generic one that comes with Copilot Studio from the generative answers because we've customized it. We've added the response was generated by AI. We're informing the users because maybe that's what your customer wanted to do or maybe that's what yourself has wanted to do. Now, what you can do then is you can actually copy all of this information uh, in the card payload editor. And once you copy that, um, this is where you're going to uh, take all of this information and you're going to put it into Copilot Studio. But what we'll first do, even though I've copied that, is we'll just jump over to the next one and look at the more robust one. So this one here has a title, response generated by AI. It has an informational section. Please be aware that this response has been generated with AI based on information provided on our website. So of course, if you're doing um, localized files like SharePoint or OneDrive or something like that, you can modify the text for that. Um, it's got a no information will be shared with third party section. It's got a company logo and it's actually got a response section that takes up the full part below this um, where we would again pass in that information. Now what this one has got is it's got IDs on everything. It's been more built out but I wanted to show you a fairly basic one and I wanted to show you a more well built out one. Now this one doesn't actually have any responses to capture anything back, so it's got no action submits, it's just plain text. But how you use both of them is very similar and I'll show you uh, the differences momentarily. Okay, so we've come into here, we've copied all of our car, uh, card payload editor, we're going back to Copilot Studio and in here, we have 
our section that we was looking at previously where we were not getting the response back because we came into here, we went into advanced, we unticked send a message. Now, because we're not getting a response back, it's still going through and it's checking the condition, answer is not blank, because we do not want to show an adaptive card that is blank. Um, we only want to show the adaptive card when there is actually a generative AI response. So under this condition here, if you press plus and click send a message, you can do add um, and then do adaptive card. And then what that's going to do is it's going to open the adaptive card properties on the right hand side. You can then just paste into here. And again, one, make sure it's 1.5 or below. And if you click off, you can see our adaptive card is shown in here now as a message. But what we can do is if we select this edit JSON part up the top here and click formula, we can actually write PowerFX formula now, and we can also refer to variables. And this is where we're going to modify that insert variable here section. So where it says insert variable here, we want to make sure that we do it without quotation marks. So what you're going to do is you're going to type topic dot, um, and then you can see if you see here, it says answer. So that's the variable. So topic dot answer is the default thing. But if you put it in the quotation marks that I've done now, all that's going to do is it's going to act as if that was text and then just show topic dot answer. If you remove the quotation marks, you can see that the topic uh, has been highlighted, which is the topic that you're currently on. And dot answer is the dot variable. So dot answer, the answer is the default name for the variable from generative answers. If you modify that, you'll obviously have to modify it in your adaptive card. And then here, if we press save, what we'll do then is we'll run exactly the same test as we did before. We used days between dates in Power Automate. And that's obviously going off to my site, it's gathering the information, it's generating the response, passing it back. And now it's passing it back in an adaptive card. You can see the response was generated by AI. You've got to calculate the number of days. It's got all of the information basically. And then do you want, uh, did you find this response helpful or not? Now, if I press um, thumbs up or thumbs down, that's going to then pass that information that I mentioned previously. If I press thumbs up, this uh, generated answer was useful because we haven't got a topic that handles this at the moment. It's just going to say, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how I can help you with that. Can you try rephrasing it? But if we created a um, particular uh, like topic that handled gener uh, the generated answer was useful or we handled one with the generated answer was not useful, we could then pass through to CSAT and we can do all of that type of stuff. But as you can see here, you can actually pass information back from an adaptive card straight in as if the user was responding. So let's say you had three buttons on there, yes, no, maybe, you could just pass that back and then react with a condition based on of that. But that is the first one. This is how easy it is to basically inject generative answers information into an adaptive card. But let's take a look at doing all of this again um, and doing it with the more advanced adaptive card. Now, what we go and do firstly is we go to here, we check to make sure it's 1.5. We scroll up to the top here, it says version 1.5. You copy this and then you come back into Copilot Studio. You press plus, do send a message and click adaptive card. Now we are just sending a message. If you wanted to capture some information, you would do this slightly differently because you'll do um, ask with an adaptive card and then it will sit there and wait for a response rather than continuing. But what we allow uh, with the messaging way that we're doing this is it allows someone to press thumbs up or thumbs down if they want to, but if they don't, then they can just continue and um, start uh, typing more questions rather than sitting there. Um, the adaptive card is waiting for a response and it's waiting uh, to get an, a response that it's actually expecting. But Again, I would recommend using messaging for non-questions or any questions that aren't required. Um, and that's very important. But again, we've gone to the messaging section here. 
um, we've, we're on the adaptive card, we just paste it into the JSON section. The first thing you're going to do is see your adaptive card appear down here, open up the formula section, and what you can actually do is you can click this expand so you can see a lot more of the formula and it makes it a lot easier to see. Um, and you can see I've got just like uh, example logos and stuff like that here. And then in the text box, this is an example response. You have to go topic dot answer. So when you actually expand it, you can see what is being used and you can see that you've basically got like an IntelliSense like experience where you can see what um, variables there are to select. So topic.answer is there. If I close that now and I save this and we'll do exactly the same test again. We'll go into days between dates um, in Power Automate and we'll see what we get back with our new adaptive card. And as you can see here, it's um, designed much differently. We've got a big heading here. We've got uh, the section just giving some information and context around the actual response. We've got information is not gonna be shared with third parties. That might be something that you or your client um, is interested in doing. We've got the company logo, this is an example company obviously. Um, then we've got the actual response through. And again, we've got the reference link. And if someone clicked on that reference link, what that's going to do is it's going to open up the website to that reference link, the actual URL that it's pulled the information from. As you can see here, I've got a days between dates in Power Automate. Um, it's got all of the methods, it's got the video, it's got all of that, and it's basically compiled the generative response based on the information on this site. So it's very uh, important to make sure that the website you're working with has so a strong, solid uh, information, because if it's bad information in, it's gonna be bad information out, no matter how pretty you make it uh, look with an adaptive card. So that is how easy it is to use generative answers, generative AI and all of that with adaptive cards to make it look and feel like your own company's version, as well as informing your customer um, however you want to. Let's say you wanted to tell them that it's a response, uh, a response is generated in AI. This is how easy you can do that with an adaptive card and you can make it pretty and you can make it ugly. You can do whatever you want with it, um, but that is how easy it is to do so. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All of this code is going to be on a blog post on my site and I'll leave it in the description as soon as I've got it up there and hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. I look forward to seeing you on another video. Peace out.